This is your guy, S.D. Booker, with the Toast to the Men. Before you listen to this video, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the like button. Hit that like button. Let's go. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the Men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button before we get started. Let's go. Dennis Schroeder. Wow, how Dennis Schroeder misread the market, overvalued himself, and fumbled the bag. Wow. So a little bit of history on Dennis Schroeder for you guys who don't know. Dennis Schroeder is a NBA player, point guard. He uh, currently, as of, as of yesterday, plays for the uh, Boston Celtics. Last year, he was with the Los Angeles Lakers. And before that, he was with OKC Thunder. And before that, he was with Atlanta Hawks. Actually, the Atlanta Hawks is who drafted him, I believe, in 2013. Now, I'll tell you how he fumbled the bag, but I'll give you some history. After that, I'll give you some history on Dennis and, and probably how we got to this point. So back in March, Dennis was offered by the Lakers, who he was with at the time, he was offered an extension, a contract extension, I believe five years, 84 million or 85 million. It's pretty good, pretty good. Uh, many of us would jump at that opportunity, but money is relative, right? It's all relative to the market, to your value and to, to the market value and to what your contemporaries uh, in your position are receiving also. So uh, that sounds like a lot of money, and which it is, I won't downplay that, but it's all relative to what you're doing, to your profession, right? So he turned down that contract, that contract extension. He turned it down. Reports say he said he deserves $100 million. He believed he can get $100 million later on, either from the Lakers or on the free market. Okay, turned it down. Playoffs come. The playoffs come. Dennis doesn't play well at all. He is exposed. It's obvious when we watch these games in the playoffs that he's limited. He's maybe a one, two trick pony. And uh, just had a bad playoff series. Horrible. Value drop. His, his value dropped immensely. I know during those playoffs, he and his agent were regretting that decision to turn down that extension. I guarantee it. So we move forward. Playoffs in. Championship game is over. It's time to talk extension. They, the Lakers being they, do not offer Dennis Schroeder an extension. They did back in March, but after the playoffs, seeing his production, his performance, they did not extend that offer again. Fast forward again, just recently, Russell Westbrook signs with the Lakers. Westbrook plays point guard, just like Dennis plays point guard. Westbrook is an all-star, multi-year all-star. Bonafide all-star, very dynamic. He can put butts in the seats like LeBron or just under that value. No brainer. They're not going to resign Dennis Schroeder. No one was making offers to him. The Lakers didn't resign him. No one was making offers. Finally, the Celtics offered Dennis a one-year contract worth, I believe, $5.9 million. So he goes from being offered by the Lakers five years, 85 million, I believe, or 84 million, to now one year, 5.9 million. Wow, you talk about a humbling experience and a reality check. That's what that is. And when you look around the league of people who are getting re-signed, People that had better seasons than him, that are better, better all-around players than Dennis, they received contracts extensions similar to the one he was offered. 
So that lets me know Dennis or Dennis and his agent misread the market. Misread the market. And he had to settle for this one-year contract. Now, I'm sure he's banking on, I'm going to do this one year in Boston. I'm going to show out. And I'm going to get this big offer again from somebody. That's what he's banking on. But that's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee because many things play into this. For one, he didn't get along with the teammates. Reportedly, he didn't get along with the teammates, with the Lakers. Uh he didn't get along with LeBron. You got to get along with LeBron. Now, if you're LeBron going to bump heads, you got to be productive. You can't bump heads with the superstar, with the money man, the guy who puts butts in the seat, in seats in, uh, butts in the seats, and you're not being productive. You can't do both. Can't have it both ways. People will tolerate certain things from you that are not favorable if you are producing and producing at a high level. If they can make money off of you or they can generate some kind of attention or revenue, they will tolerate certain things until that well dries up. He wasn't worth it. So they didn't extend him another extension, uh, offer him another extension. And so how did we get to this point, man? So Dennis, I think Dennis, uh, like many of us, may suffer from identity crisis. And when I say that, I'm not talking about schizophrenia or uh, being bipolar. A lot of us, man, don't know who we are. And many of us undervalue ourselves and many of us overvalue ourselves. We don't test the market. We don't read the market correctly. We don't read the room correctly. And, uh, like Dennis, we end up having to settle for less. Now, Dennis's less is 5.9 million, you know, so <laughs> it's not too bad. But like I said, money money is relative, depending on your profession and the market and your position. So uh, for an NBA player of his caliber, because he is a, a good player, he is a decent player, that was a steal for the Celtics to get him for one year at $5.9 million. Now, the one year is good because Dennis does have a history, not just with the Lakers. He has a history throughout his, his uh, tenure as an NBA player of not getting along with players and being hard to deal with on and off the court. That's his reputation. So the one year is like... A little carrot they're dangling over his head to keep him in check, right? To make sure he keeps a, a positive attitude. And uh, the 5.9 million is not really hurting him on the salary cap. Hey man, that's that's how you get treated when you don't really know who you are. And I think Dennis, uh, just from his background, he may have some issues of knowing who he is. So let's take it back. Dennis Schroeder was born and raised in Germany. Yes, a brother. I don't know you call him a brother. A black man born and raised in Germany, Brunswick, Germany. Um, as of today, there's only about a million blacks in Germany. Now, Not only is he a black born in Germany, brother has a dark complexion. He's darker than me, right? So that may play a role to uh, some identity crisis. It's like a fish out of water, all right? You're black in Germany and you have a dark complexion. I don't know how that can play in a, in a man's mind. Uh, just dealing with brothers and seeing how brothers handle a dark complexion in America where there are many, you know, blacks and many people that look like them, you know, people struggle with that, especially females. But, uh, so I can't even, can't even imagine 
the impact it may have on a brother that's in Germany, right? So that may be the reason Dennis is so aggressive on the court, tough cat on the court, and he ha he's had problems off the court. Uh, he's gotten into a few fights at late night spots. Uh, one incident, you know, found him uh, charged with a, a felony. So, you know, maybe this is the uh, the covering, the shield he had to wear to survive and to excel. You know, I can't say it was wrong because it did get him to the NBA, but at some point you got to turn it off or know when to turn it off and do some deep diving into why you are the way you are. And so... Uh, Fast forward, he gets drafted by the Hawks. He played professionally in Germany, did well, get drafted by the Hawks, comes to America, of course. Uh, immediately picked up the reputation, been hard to get along with, didn't get along with the coaches, the staff, the players. At one point with the Hawks, he even unfollowed them on social media to let them know, you know his displeasure with them. So very immature. That's not the sign of a leader or a point guard. And as a point guard, man, you are an extension of the coach. That's it. You are an extension of the coach. You are laying out and running the plays and 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 uh, instilling the, the the system and the energy and the vibe that the coach would want you to. The coach just can't get out on the court and play. But you are putting guys in a proper position. You're coaching guys on the court. You may even have to, you know, slightly reprimand guys, check guys on the court uh, to get them back focused. But, you know, you can't do that as a point guard if they don't respect you. Um, it didn't work out with the Hawks, even though the next year or two he, he became a starter. And that's another thing. He was a six-man coming off the bench. Uh, I'm sure he felt like he should have started, didn't. Uh, they traded, I believe, Teague, Jeff Teague, and uh, Dennis eventually started. Got out of the doghouse, uh, seemingly, but that didn't last long. So they traded him with the OKC, became a backup again. And uh, I knew he didn't have the respect of his teammates when, with OKC because I uh, can't remember the gentleman's name, Adams. He got into it with his teammate Adams. And uh Adams had to check him or push him or calm him down. Like that just doesn't that doesn't happen to the point guard. Like I said, a point guard is an extension of a coach. That would be equivalent of a player pushing or checking the quarterback on a football team or the pitcher or the catcher, you know, on a baseball team. That shows you there's a lack of respect. Right, um, because those are usually the captains, those are usually the leaders, and uh, those are the guys who people follow into battle on that field or a hardwood, whatever it may be, the diamond. So, when you disrespect the leader or who's supposed to be the leader of your team, that says a lot. And he didn't have that respect. He never had the respect of his teammates. So that told me a lot. Now, Dennis has also gotten married recently, a uh, Caucasian woman, white woman. And I mention that because I think this all plays a part into him being delusional, not really knowing what's going on and just feeling out of place. Um, that's not a big deal, but I'm going to put that in context later. So he moves on to the Lakers eventually from OKC. In one of the games, he has a little scrap of back and forth with uh, Kyrie Irving. Now, Kyrie Irving, he's eccentric himself. He's he's uh, been known to, hard, uh, to be a person hard to get along with. Also, uh, so he's no angel. But 
after the game, when Kyrie was asked why did he and Dennis get into it, Kyrie said Dennis called him the N-word. And, uh, you know, Dennis said he didn't mean it in a negative way. It was just in battle. But see, there you go again. He's not reading the room. He's not reading the temperature. These guys, especially a guy like Kyrie, who's super pro-black and uh, super in tune with his uh, American Indian uh, bloodline, they don't see you as one of them, right? They don't see you as one of them. These, these American, these black American players do not see you as one of them. Although you guys are part of the same fraternity, the NBA, they don't see you as one of them. So you can't get away. Although black, you know, dark skinned black, you, they're not gonna, it's not gonna sit well with them when you call them the N word because you're from Germany. You're from Germany. You don't eat the same foods. You probably don't listen to the same music. You don't have the same vibe. You don't live on the same frequency. Uh, the slang we use or they use, I don't use the word, but the slang they use, they're not going to let you slide with it. And again, you know, just not knowing, not knowing, uh, reading the room wrong or not reading at all. So I think this all plays a part, man, just through his life. I think he's had mishaps of not knowing his position in the world, who he is, and what he brings to the world. And I think that's gotten him in a lot of situations that have been detrimental to him. And then, you know, I forgot I left this out. When he got traded to the Lakers. Now, granted, let's remember he was, he went back to a backup with OKC behind Chris Paul, got traded to the Lakers. And he told the media he was not going to be a six man. He was not going to come off the bench anymore. He was going to be a starter. Uh, no one promised him this. No one told him this. This is what he said he was going to do. He said he's tired of coming off the bench. Now this guy hasn't won anything. He hasn't won anything. He got drafted out of Germany, brought to the States to play a child's game, to make millions. And now he's on LeBron James' team, one of the greatest players of all time, a champion, a multi-champion, a guy where it's either championship or buff, bus. He's about to be on his team. And he's already saying what he's not going to do and that he's not going to come off the bench. Delusional. Delusional. <laughs> Delusional. Overvaluing yourself. This is LeBron's team. They are heavily vested into LeBron, not Dennis Schroeder. Many people don't even know who Dennis Schroeder is. Right, the casual fan doesn't know Dennis Schroeder. They everyone knows LeBron James. Even people who do not watch basketball knows the name LeBron James. That's the money maker. And once again, Dennis is delusional. Uh, so we get to this point. In March, he's offered five years, eighty-five million. He turns it down. He thinks he'd get a hundred million. <laughs> no one makes an offer to him because he has a bad series and a bad reputation. <clears throat> so Boston is the only one that offered him one year, 5.9 million. Man, this brother got to be kicking himself. His wife, man, got to be thinking like, what an idiot. 
What an idiot. This brother got to fire his, his agent for doing that. But I got a strong feeling his agent probably told him to take that deal back in March. And Dennis said, no, we can do better. I have a strong feeling. I don't know Dennis, but I got a strong feeling from his history. He told the agent, no, we're not taking it. We can get a hundred million. It's crazy. But many of us brothers are just like that, man. We uh, misread the market. We misread the room. We overvalue ourselves. And uh, we forget. We forget where we come from. And we stop being grateful. Dennis stop being grateful. This is a brother who was discovered in Germany in Germany, brought to the States <clears throat> and is making millions. He was making millions as a backup. He wanted more, he wanted more, and it's okay to want more. He wanted to be a starter, that's okay. But you have to earn that, All right? You can't feel the title. You have to earn that, that position. And there was a sense of entitlement, I think. And it got him in trouble. He may not be in the league much longer. And it was, was so crazy, man. He's a relatively young man. And he may not be in the league two years from now because of his mindset. Listen, the brother plays hard. I've seen him play hard. Uh, he is limited in some things. But with his skill set, his body structure, he should be in the league for at least 15 years. But I don't think he's going to last because of his mindset and him not having a good self-awareness. That can hurt you, brothers. Always be aware of who you are, where you are, and what position you play. You can't look to the left or to the right and see what this brother's doing, what position this brother has, what kind of money this brother is making. You can't pocket watch. You got to get what's for you and be grateful and be satisfied. Now, strive for more. I'm always striving for more. All right. I mentioned that in the book, A Toast to the Man, how, you know, I'm always pushing and climbing the ladder, the ladder in, in IT. Nothing wrong with that. But I've also mentioned in videos how I've been turned down on positions because I wasn't qualified. I didn't put in the work. I wasn't qualified. And if I hadn't gotten, if I had gotten the position, I would have been a token brother. So I'm glad I didn't get the position because I was not qualified. I did not earn that position. So yeah, man. Know who you are. Don't fumble the bag. And many of you brothers listening, you've been in that position where you were not self-aware, right? Misjudged the environment, misjudged the universe and the position you were in, got cocky, felt entitled, and ended up in a worse position than before. So I'm not bagging on the brother. I'm not coming down, but I got to keep it real. You know, I've been in that position. Many brothers have been in that position, but we're supposed to learn from the mistakes of others. That's why I tell you my mistakes. That's why I tell you other people's mistakes so we can learn. It's not to uh, bag on them and uh, rip them, but I got to keep it straight, uncut, and we can learn from it, the good and the bad. All right. Don't be that brother, man. Don't be that brother. Be self-aware. Know who you are. Know where you're at. And let's go get it. Honestly, from me to you, as always, love, peace.